Good morning guys, good morning internet. Um, hello, my name is EJ and I am here with another art process video for us to dissect and take a look at and talk about. Um, so yeah, um, this particular video is interesting because um, this is a video for uh, this month's challenge, for character design challenge. Uh, so yeah this is my entry for that challenge sorry i'm like losing my train of thought um well you know before i talk about this piece and what this piece is all about um i guess it's very important to just go ahead and talk about the process for now because this process goes by real quick right now i'm doing initial sketch designs uh for the outfit of the kit that we just saw at the very beginning of the video um this should have gone much longer than it did. Uh, I think in all honesty, I only did like a 20 minute sketch. And if I'm not wrong, I only did two outfits, this outfit and the one before that. And typically when I do this, when I do this thumbnail process, I do like four or five, um, sometimes more if I'm really inspired. Uh, but yeah, I only did two and I just wasn't feeling it. But, um, uh, I guess for some odd reason, I, I didn't feel like doing the sketches because I kind of had something in mind already and what to do. Um, partially, that's the reason why. And the other reason why is I, I didn't really want to deviate too much from the original design uh, that I had. So, yeah. Yeah. So, I, I did only do two designs because, as you can see, um, I'm sketching a dragon now, which is really part of the character. Um, but yeah, I was catching the dragon, uh, I guess, just to loosen myself up and, and I think too much, but unfortunately after this one, I just like lost the energy to do any part of the designs and I just let it go. And you'll see me jump into Blender 3D to do something, um, that is needed for the artwork. Um, so yeah, here's Blender now, um. But anyways, let me talk about what I illustrated and what the drawing was. Um, a lot of you guys will probably know what the, the artwork is. It's a fan art for the movie Spirited Away. Uh, there's a character in that movie called Haku. Um, and that is the artwork that I tried to recreate or tried to redesign. Um, it's a character made by Michio Kaku. Awesome, awesome director. I love him as a director. And his movies are fantastic. If none of you guys have ever gotten a chance to see any of the Studio Ghibli films, I highly, highly suggest that you watch it. Um, the Studio Ghibli uh, company in Japan is known as like the Walt Disney of the East. They create really amazing animated features. Um, and some of them are just just very just very good um so one of the movies was spirited away and for the facebook's character design challenge um for this month's challenge november 2019 they wanted a redesign of any of the characters from that movie and i decided to choose haku which is one of the main uh one of the main characters in the movie um, uh, so yeah, that's who I wanted to redesign. Um, I, I didn't have any grand plans for him. And, and that's part of the reason why when I was doing the thumbnail process, the initial sketch process, uh, I didn't really develop it any farther than what I did. Like I should have, since I didn't have any fresh ideas and I didn't have any new thoughts as to how to redesign everything. Like I should have... I should have explored it some more and I should have spent more time during that initial detailing process, but I didn't. And part of the reason why I didn't was because I knew that I was running out of time to do the illustration. When I started the illustration, there was only about, I'd say, two weeks left. And technically two weeks is plenty of time for me to do something. Um, but. I, uh, I I didn't want to feel too stressed. Like I, I wanted to finish everything that I wanted to do um, for the illustration. And so basically I just ended up um, 
be painting through everything or um yeah that's basically what i just did um i knew that i wasn't going to do a fully developed illustration like i normally would and i knew that i didn't really have the time for it like budget wise even though two weeks is plenty of time when i had to consider all the other projects that i was going to do during that time frame like i just knew that there wasn't really a whole lot like i, I could have i could have squeezed everything that i needed in there but I didn't want to be stressed either, so I, I made a conscious decision to just not develop it any further than than what was needed. Um, I already had, kind of had an idea in my mind, anyways. Which, in, in my mind, the only redesign that I kind of thought of was pretty much what ended up in the final piece, which is the sleeves became different, and then there's prints on the jacket. But that's about it. There's ribbons too, which wasn't part of the original design um yeah and i'll talk some more about it when it's happening but overall like i just had a feeling i wasn't going to redesign it any more than than already was there so yeah but anyways um to talk about what's going on in the video <laughs> what's going on in the video is me trying to block out the character um together with a light source and really i really could have totally skipped this <laughs> the, the reason why i did the 3d first was because i knew that i wanted like this odd camera angle thing going on and i knew that with the camera lens um that i was gonna have i knew that the feet and the legs were gonna be small um compared to the upper body because with the perspective that I was planning, I knew that it, everything was going to be distorted essentially. So I really needed the 3D mock-up initially to kind of give me an idea of, you know, size and proportion and, you know, of course lighting too, since, you know, I was already doing the 3D anyway, so I figured I might as well do the lighting as well. So yeah, that's probably the reason why I decided to do the initial 3D blocking for this one. And the funny part about this though is that is that i didn't end up using the feet at all like I, I really needed the feet because that was the main anatomy that i was worried about uh, i need to get that right you know structure wise and proportion wise um together with the whole lens warping effect but in the end i didn't even use it uh, as you can see um in this part right now which i'm about to start which is the sketching process um so yeah um i spent about an hour doing the 3d mock-up and it's kind of debatable if it was needed or not i mean it helped with the lighting sort of but then in the end i ended up having lighting issues as well so um so yeah so it was kind of questionable on whether or not it was effective or if it helped um but, I mean, I went ahead and did the process anyways, you know, so, I mean, it wasn't, it wasn't detrimental or anything, you know, it wasn't like a bad thing, so yeah. But anyways, for the 3D, I used the software MB Lab, which is the software that evolved out of the manual Bastioni Lab. Um, I think I mentioned the Man Manuel Bastioni Lab software before, it's, it's a very nice piece of plug-in software for blender but the project got abandoned uh because funding was gone or funding was lost so yeah um really sad about that um but somebody picked up the project and it's now called mb lab um and that was the character generator that i used to help me create the character um and you see me post them and everything um that's the one reason why i like the mb lab is because um, the MB Lab can have pre-rigs already sorted out, so you don't have to rig the character. Uh, unlike some um, software solutions out there, there is another software solution out there called Make Human, and I do believe that there's a rigging solution for that one too. Um, but I couldn't get it to work with Blender. <laughs> the plugin, the import plugin, was like broken or something. It would it, it would import the character, but not the full rig 
So I couldn't get it to work. <laughs> so I ended up just using MB Lab, which is kind of, uh, shall I say, broken. I mean, it works, it's great, but there's like some few tweaks that needs to happen with that software because I was having difficulty with that software when I was working for this particular project. I love the pro I love the software, you know, I'm by no means discouraging people from using it because it's an amazing piece of software. Um, but yeah, there's some functionalities I feel like could be so much better. But enough about that. It's a great piece of software. You know, if you're in a rush to block out a character and you need a character that, you know, comes pre-rig, I definitely would recommend choosing it because it's free. Uh, and it works, you know, um, flawlessly in certain scenarios. So, yeah. But, and it was going back to what's going on. So, I took the 3D render of the character and basically just use uh the form of the person and kind of blocked out my character and as you can see <laughs> this is what i was talking about with the feet like i redid this feet so many times that i ended up not even using the what was rendered like i'm having to come up with my own feet because the one that was rendered just looks so odd and this one that I'm sketching actually kind of looks good. Like, like that looks really good. But then when you add the leg portion, it then starts to look really weird and funky. And so I came up with this idea, a solution to hide the feet, which is to add flowers um, and vegetation. And that actually has like a... A connotation too to another Michio Kaku film which the film is uh, Princess Mononoke and in Princess Mononoke there's the scene with this forest god uh, and when he walks vegetation grows around his feet because it's like all powerful and things just grow like uber fast around him so when he walks there's like vegetation and grows around him so you know for the ones who recognize that, they'll instantly recognize that that's kind of like what I'm referencing with the flowers. You know, I added this flower part to hide the feet, but it also serves as a reference for another Michio Kaku film. So, you know, it was great that I had the solution, you know, because it serves a function, a reference function, and, and as well as... Uh, functional function which is to hide the feet my awful feet i don't know what it is about feet drawing feet is just so so difficult so difficult um hands as well they're very very difficult um things to to draw like for for the hands of haku i ended up having to take photos of my hand in those certain poses just so that i could have like a good hand pose because the hand pose that I was coming up just wasn't working for me so yeah but yeah so here's my solution I sketched it out you know all this flower design and kind of hid all the things that I didn't like about the feet um which is you know again like I mentioned Doing that kind of defeats the whole 3D process. <laughs> this is, I did the 3D process because of the feet specifically. <laughs> and now that the feet is gone, I was like, wow, I could have saved myself an hour. But I wouldn't have known that that's what would have happened. You know, I mean, that's the beauty of the drawing process is that you don't really know what part of the process will be dropped eventually. So, yeah. But anyways, so um, here comes the outfit design you know and initially i hesitated at first like I, I drew the character and his pose but i didn't put the clothes in because i was going to take initially initially i was going to take a break uh, to kind of you know go back and redraw some things again and do some sketches just for the clothing and see what it looks like or see what kind of redesign i could come up with and I didn't really feel like redesigning it. Maybe I just felt rushed or something. I'm not sure. Um, but at the time when I was working on it, I, I didn't really feel like doing it. So I just went ahead and just went with 
pretty much the same design. I mean, the only thing that's different really are the sleeves. Because in the sleeves, um, what Haku is wearing is like a traditional Japanese jacket. And if I'm not wrong, the sleeves are supposed to be attached to the part that's on his body. But I separated them. Um, my inspiration for the sleeves came from Yuna from the game Final Fantasy X. Uh, Yuna sleeves is separate from like her, the rest of her outfit and I thought I was like a kind of a cool look so that's kind of what I decided to go for um but yeah I mean design wise it's pretty much the same exact kaku it's not you know overly different from the original design um so yeah And so here comes the coloring process. Um, I took out the 3D renders so that I could take a look at uh, the well lit areas. And as you can see from the render, really the brightest area is the chest and the face. And initially that's kind of like what I was going for. Um, but I accidentally made the ground way too bright than what it really needed to be. And so it caused like this lighting conflict eventually that people were discussing when I was asking for critique for this piece, um, which I'll talk about in a second, like later on. But um, what I did uh, just a few moments ago was like my two tone process to kind of, you know, help me figure out where the light areas is and the rest of the um, the area which will be not necessarily in the dark but you know it'd be like the mid-tone to dark um i always do this with my speed paintings and my illustrations you know to just kind of help me figure out where the lighting area is and to kind of create like a good value range or help or it helps me create a good value range basically um so yeah doing that little two-tone thing kind of always helps me out. And then, of course, after I did that, I added a photo of a ground that I thought I was going to end up using a lot more. But in the end, I ended up erasing a lot of it away. Uh, I didn't save any of the details. I thought I wanted to initially save like the details of the rocks and whatnot. But in the end, I was like, you know what? We're, we're really going to keep this thing simple. Um, so, yeah. And then after I did the ground, I did a real quick color um, coloring in of the sketch. And as you can see, that I'm really loose about this. You know, I'm like not trying to color into inside the lines or anything because I knew that I was gonna do my smudging thing, my favorite favorite technique, which is to smudge everything into recognizable shapes, um, which I've actually started. I did the background for us, and now. I zoom in to smudge everything in the in the face and body area but yeah I, I did this really messy and I like doing this really messy because sometimes you get really cool color combinations that you didn't expect you know I I'm, was talking to someone about this not too long ago um doing this little technique is really cool because you get good nice color combinations that's unexpected you know and it's really cool but sometimes you get really nasty colors so there's like pitfalls to avoid when using this technique or at least you know there's things that could happen that one needs to watch out for and know how to deal with it when it occurs so yeah but as soon as I have all those colors down, I'm just like smudging, blending everything, getting them into this recognizable shape of a boy blowing magical leaves or something. Um, is basically what's going on. Well, technically in the movie, it's not really magical leaves. It's like pieces of paper that comes out of nowhere or something. 
and it's meant to distract people. Um, the scene that Hako did this in, um, he was posed like that and he blew the paper um, and it created all this magic. Uh, magical pieces of paper and it was supposed to help Chihiro the main character of the movie um, It was supposed to help her escape or something. I'm not really remembering the scene correctly I, I think that's what happened So don't quote me though because I'm not sure if that's exactly what happened, but I'm almost sure that that's that that's what Haku did he blew this magical pieces of object thing out of thin air um, and he created this magical things to help distract or to distract the people, the magical creatures around them so that Chihiro couldn't escape. Uh, so yeah. Um, so yeah, this, this is what this post is. It's a very recognizable pose. Uh, if you know the movie Spirited the Way, you will instantly know this pose um, because it's an iconic part of iconic part of the movie like the, the scene is just very memorable um so everyone would know what this post is about if you've seen the movie so yeah So I just got done lassoing the foreground area so I could exclude it um, for when I worked on the background. So I'm working in the background right now and just going through it real fast real quick. And looking at this right now, you can see that the ground is way brighter than it needs to be. Um, my original intention for the composition was that the brightest thing in the image should be the magical leads slash magical pieces of paper coming out of Haku's hand and that's supposed to you know magically um or that's supposed to ma uh, that's supposed to light up the whole scene the thing though is that I made the ground way brighter than it should be so it kind of almost looks like there's something else lighting the scene um so in the end i did this one thing that um i added this uh fill light well no it's not a fill light it's skylight um i guess is what you would call it or almost like a rim light because it's on the very top of his head and on the top of his arms um and it's very subtle and i didn't even get to record the record it when I did the edit but in the final image if you take a look at it towards the end again you'll see in the final image there's this rim of light on top of his head and on top of his shoulders and arms and what that rim of light is supposed to indicate is that there's another light source aside from the magical thing um, because yeah and there was slight confusion as to the light um, because of the bright ground and I tried dimming the ground, you know, I tried to lower the brightness of the ground, but in the end, it was still strong enough and overpowering enough that it, it was still creating a conflict of the light source, you know. Um, Douglas, Knapp, and Candy Marie um, both mentioned this, right? And Candy Marie had like the perfect um, description for the problem. She said that 
you know, if I was to cover the lower part of the illustration, it looks like the light was definitely coming from where I wanted it to be, which is the front. But if you cover the top part of the illustration and just look at the bottom part of the illustration, it looks like the light is coming from above. And so, you know, is it front or is it above? What's the main light source? So, and really I want it to be the front, you know, and in order for it to be the front, then I needed to destroy the ground essentially and get rid of all the light in the ground. I mean, that's the only way I could have saved it or I could have made that, made the illustration look logical. Um, or the only way I could have made the lighting logical is by destroying all the light on the ground. But I didn't, I wasn't prepared to do that. I didn't want to do that because then that would put the piece too dark and I didn't want the piece too dark. And so again, like I said, that's why I added that rim of light uh, on top of the shadows and on top of the head to just kind of slowly indicate that there's another light source up above. So hopefully it kind of resolves the whole lighting issue. Uh, it doesn't really quite resolve the lighting issue. And in all honesty, I, I could develop this piece some more to like troubleshoot it and whatnot. But troubleshooting it would really require me to restart the whole scene from the very beginning. Because lighting issues such as the, this, the one I'm encountering in this one, it, that, really, that is such a foundational part of the painting that if you're having issues with that, if you can't find a quick solution, then more than likely your only other solution is to restart the illustration. And I was getting to that point where I had to restart it, you know, up until I found the solution to do, to just add the rim light uh, and whatnot, or not rim light. See, I'm like using the vocabulary wrong, um, like a subtle light, uh, highlight, um, so yeah, just look at the final illustration and you'll see what I mean. Uh, it's very subtle. It's orange looking, warm color to kind of indicate um, that there's a warm light source above. So yeah. But anyways, now I've started the detailing process. So after, you know, I did all this smudging, basically I start detailing, you know, kind of just delineating where all the edges go, do all my edge work, um, kind of shape um, what things look like. Um, the other thing that initially I mentioned, or the one other thing that I mentioned that I wanted to change was the whole prints. Like I wanted to put prints on his jacket, his outer garment, the white garment that he's wearing. Uh, so I wanted to put something print wise on it and I was going to go for a dragon because Haku in the movie turns into a dragon. And so I wanted to do the Haku dragon print on his outfit but it didn't really end up looking like the dragon it just ended up kind of looking like baroque design again which i love baroque design if you've seen some of my videos you know i'm crazy about baroque and floral flourishes um so yeah that's pretty much just what it ended up looking like so uh, from afar you can't really distinguish i mean it kind of looks like it could be a dragon but it kind of looks like it's the baroque floral design so either way you know i there was something there <laughs> And so I kind of just wanted to indicate that there is a print on his outfit and that part was successful. So I decided not to fully detail that part out. And then I'm working in the eye. This eye gave me so much trouble. Like it just does not look right. Um, so in the end, I got rid of this eye and just closed his eyes because it looked way better close than what I drew. Uh, I was messing around with it and trying to figure it out and I couldn't. <laughs> so I just made him close his eyes as a solution. So yeah. So this piece, I really initially wanted this piece to be a speed paint. Um, I posted a video in my channel not too long ago called By the Light of the Moon and that one uh has a sketch to it uh, well let me backtrack okay so I, I i do a lot of speed paints in my channel and when i do my speed paints typically i don't do a sketch 
or an outline sketch or when if if i do an outline sketch it's really quick it's just a rough sketch and i don't go into full details like i did with this piece and you know that's most of my speed paintings by the light of the moon was kind of odd because when i did by the light of the moon there was a sketch component to it but that sketch went by real quick and if you add the sketch together with everything else that i did in that piece all together the whole painting just took me about three and a half hours this one took me eight hours like a really long time um the outline sketch took me an hour and a half so that was a good portion of it uh and then the actual painting took me four hours and then there was like an additional two hours that i did edits because you know when i asked for critiques people gave me critiques and i kind of worked on it which again like i said the main critique was lighting and um the sleeves somebody mentioned the sleeves like i didn't um it doesn't look natural enough so i i fixed that and made it more um actiony looking <laughs> i guess um but yeah um this piece is not a speed paint as like uh, i was hoping it would be I, I really wanted the painting process to just go two hours but it went a long long time um and then there was a sketch you know which took me a long time and there's really nothing wrong with a sketch you know a part of me really wanted to do, to do that sketch because i don't sketch enough i don't do an outline sketch enough in my speed paintings you know kind of just wing it a lot of times and there's really nothing wrong with winging winging it but you know as someone puts it you know a good line sketch <laughs> it's great every now and then you know and since i don't do enough line sketches i figured i'll do one for this piece so i took the time to do it for this piece um but yeah i i, I felt like i could have saved some more time um if i just skipped that part so yeah but you win some, you lose some, you know, you try to budget time and you think you could pull it off in that time and so it never ever works out that way. I mean, that's what life is, you know. So, as so long as you're prepared to deal with the consequences of some of your er earlier decisions, you'll be fine. So, and in this case, I mean, I really did have the time to spare, you know, so I just went ahead and just spent the extra time for it. Now, personally, if I had a choice, I would spend a lot more time on this. Instead of just doing eight hours on this, I would, you know, do 20 hours, 30 hours on this character to just really, really explore this character and really, really develop it. But again, like I said, I had other projects that I wanted to take care of, and I didn't want to just be focused on this one object for the two weeks that I have left um, before the deadline. So... So yeah.
So this piece is pretty much close to being finished. So um, I guess I could say my final words about this piece. Um, after I finish uh, detailing the background, or I mean the ground and the florals and the ground. After that, um, I went and did some tweaks on the lighting issue. Because again, like I said, somebody mentioned um, all the lighting issues that was going on. So the tweaks I did is that I lightened the chest area, highlighted it some more, and his right arm. And I also turned down the ground, which is what I'm doing right now. I'm turning down the brightness on the ground. Um, it's still not the most effective edit there is, you know. I mean, it kind of works, you know. Um, it kind of shows the, the glowing area right next to his hand is like the brightest part instead of the ground competing with that area but again like I said it's the ground was still too bright so I had to do something with it which unfortunately what I the edit I did for it did not get recorded like I mentioned um, and you see me we sketch out the sleeves because somebody said that I should make it look more action looking you know more flurry. so yeah but those are my edits so um, yeah I'm happy with this fast speed paint sort of that I did for the character design challenge uh, this marks my official first entry for the character design challenge I actually did another character design challenge uh, I did the Mongolian Huntress which was I think the challenge for September or August I'm not sure um, I think it was the September challenge and I actually made a Mongolian Huntress um, entry but i did not turn it in because that piece was immensely problematic like there's so many problems in that piece that i decided not to turn it in because it just it just didn't look good <laughs> i mean it looked all right but it, it's not the best of my piece um i might make a time lapse video out of that entry uh, later on but for this one um so yeah, I might make an entry or a time lapse entry for the Mongolian Huntress, but I know I was definitely going to make a video out of this first official entry or the first official successful entry I have in the character design challenge. So yeah, um, I'm really glad the way it turned out, you know, for a semi fast painting. Um, really wish I had more time to develop it, but alas, I have other projects I need to defend too. So yeah. But yeah, I'm just adding the final touches in this piece, kind of just working on those sleeves, making it look more action, more flowing, more, uh, yeah, more flowing. It looks more like it's interacting with like some wind or something. That's, that's what it looks like. It definitely looks like it's blowing around, kind of like the way the ribbons are on his legs. So yeah. And I think this is done. Pretty much complete. Thank you guys for watching this with me. Uh, I'll catch you guys in the next video. Like and subscribe. Good night.